Hey, what's up, Rockstars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for Married to Medicine Los Angeles Season 2, Episode 7. I didn't think I was going to be able to do this video today because Jada had the studio. Jada broke her retainer. Yes, she did, you guys, for the second time. This will be the second time. This particular time, she left it outside. Actually, she let it fall out of the car and somebody rolled over it. So it was shattered. And um, yeah, so she's getting another one. This time, however, she will be paying for it with her money. Yes, $400 out of her own pocket. I'm just like, Jada, really? What the fuck? I told you guys, she tear up everything, every single thing. And then her, her excuse is always like, well, how was I supposed to know it was going to fall out of her lap? <laughs> Why is it in your lap anyway, Jada? You're supposed to wear it at night. Oh my God. Anyway. Hope you guys had a fantastic Juneteenth weekend. I hope you had a fabulous Father's Day weekend, all my rock star daddies out there. Um, it was very nice and uh, it went by quickly. So we are back to the grind Monday. Got to get to it, you guys. The review, let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so the show opens where it ended last week, which was with Imani telling Britain that she is getting a divorce. And like I told you guys, it really feels like we lost a part of the story. I'm starting to believe, like somebody said in my comments last week, that, you know, Phil and Imani weren't even good last season because I honestly don't see how it can get to this point. We're not even talking separation. I mean, they're separated now, but we just all the way to the D word. We're to divorce, you know, and... um she just feels like they grew apart. Um, he's, he, she guesses the move to Oklahoma was his attempt at separating. And then when she mentioned that she wanted to get a divorce, he didn't even put up a fuss about it. He was like, okay. <laughs> he was just waiting for her to say it. So um, when it gets to that point, yeah, it's, it's really a wrap on that. When the other person is disconnected, has checked out, um, I don't even know if Imani was feeling like she really wanted to be with him like that, like that. I just don't know. I never felt this overwhelming connection between the two of them anyway. I thought they were cool, but, uh, you know, when I really sit back and think about it, I was like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, all's well that ends well, if you ask me. <laughs> anyway, she's kind of crying um, because, you know, she's never opened up. And she's not real comfortable telling people. Britain was like, you should have told us, you know, you don't face these kind of things on your own. That's what you have friends for. I was like, are these your friends, Imani girl? But I mean, okay, on the show, those are her girls. So she's going to try to figure out how she can let her friends in. But for now, she's not going to Shanique's um, birthday party. Just let them know that something came up. And Britain tells them that she'll tell her that she was an emergency happened with work. So at the ranch, you guys, we see um, little tiny Robert giving a lesson to one of the guys there, some line dance looking like a little spinning top. <laughs> when he popped up, when he was doing a little dance, he kind of jumped up. I was like, look at him go. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, we see everybody on their way, on their way there. Shanique and Jasmine. Um, Leah comes dressed like she's going. She said she thought they said rodeo, not rodeo. She's got on these boots that look like they're size 13. That's a girl. How big are your fucking feet? <laughs> when they showed her from far away, I was like, oh, oh, girl, no. The boots was cute, but they was big. Okay. Um, uh, Britton and Matt get there, you know, her and her equestrian wear. Kendra and Hobart come. They're the only ones that's really dressed appropriately for a horseback ride. Everybody gets there. Then we have Shanique and Jasmine. They're actually the last ones to get there because, of course, it's a surprise for Shanique. So Jasmine brings her in. And after we're all fake surprise, oh, God, oh, this is so wonderful. Oh, thank you. Goes and gives everybody a hug. You know, thanks, little tiny Robert, for you know, pulling this off. You know, where's Imani? Britton says, well, she had, she was on call. So she was um, called to an emergency with one of her clients. So she won't be here. Okay, well, that's fine. So we gonna get this show on the road. Let's get on the horsies. So we see them on the horse, you guys, and they're on the trail up at Griffith Park. I think I've told you guys a story about how my aunts, when I was really little, they used to take all of us, me and my cousins, and they would get stone drunk with they like some guys that they were dating they probably wasn't supposed to be seeing these guys or something and um uh, we'd all go up to griffith park and my aunts and them would take they would get on their horses and they would take off because they knew how to ride and then they would lead the kids back with the instructor the guides or whatever you know the beginners and i would be on that fucking horse and i would be so fucking stressed out it was the worst and i told you guys about how the time when the horse took off running and uh, I got scared and I couldn't find the rain and you know, I was just going and going and going and I had to jump off and I 
fucked up my ankle. Okay, that's the last time that Roxanne has been on a horse. Um, I love to look at horses. I think people, I think they're beautiful animals, but yeah, I'm not trying to be on one. So when they were showing them on the trail and that little motherfucker was going all the way over to the side, I was like, Brit, girl, I know, I know exactly. I ain't never been so stressed out on those runs as I would be on those. I mean, it would be so stressful. Like, get away from this cliff, please. Everybody's like, oh, it's so beautiful. This shit ain't beautiful. The motherfucker might fall over. But then the instructor always would tell me, Roxanne, uh, you don't want to die. The horse don't want to die either. The horse is smart enough to know that if you go off that cliff, it's going to be bad news. So you ain't got to worry about it. I was like, I give a fuck. I don't know what this horse is thinking. <laughs> he might be ready to commit suicide or something. So yeah, no. Anyways, you know, they get all the way up to the top. Beautiful sunset. Nice, nice, nice. Get on back down the hill. Um, and we're going to have this dinner that um, little tiny Robert has set up for the girls and um, the guys. You know, the husbands are there as well. It's supposed to be like a, a good old, you know, good old Western meal. You know, cornbread, beans, potato salad, whatever, whatever. And um, when they sit down to eat, remember Kendra's supposed to be on this diet. Jasmine goes over to her and tells her, can I have your cornbread? You know, you're not supposed to be eating that. You're on a diet. I was like, mm. First of all, we wouldn't have had this problem at the beginning because I would have already told Britton, I mean, not Britton, Jasmine, that I am going to eat today. So I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth. I know I'm on a diet. We'll pick back up tomorrow. Okay. But if Jasmine still had chosen to come up to me in that particular moment, I would have politely, you know, fun, funfully, <laughs> if that's a word, cursed her out. Like, bitch, you better go on somewhere. I'm about to eat this cornbread. Okay, I'm a grown-ass woman. I know what the fuck I want to do. I don't give a fuck what you say right now. And then, if she would have persisted, then it would have probably gotten nasty. But, bitch, don't be up here talking and telling me I can't eat no fucking cornbread. Britain was like, are you, are you, um, policing her food? Yeah, no. That, the discussion should have been had ahead of time because Jasmine is that type of person, okay? So worried about the sugar and all. I mean, I appreciate it. Thank you. I know I asked you to be my trainer, but not today, bitch. Leah, of course, is laughing like, you know, I can't even believe she's doing that. And she's all, Leah, why do you laugh behind, under your breath? It's so rude, you know. I really take get the impression that Jasmine is just trying to spice up the show. Okay, because all the things that she gets fussy about, it don't be nothing. So I just feel like she's trying to spice it because maybe she even thinks the shit is boring, you know. And um, Leah's looking at her like, girl, not today. Please don't come with this mess with me today, you know. But of course, they get to arguing. The table starts to erupt, you know. Jasmine tells her she lost her street cred. I don't even know what that meant. Maybe I missed it in part of the argument. But Britton was like, oh, street cred. You guys both live in Beverly Hills. What are we talking about here, you know. So it was all silly. Um, like all the fights are on this show. Everybody's just kind of watching them thinking it's silly. Even Shanique didn't get involved, which I was happy to see. You know, Shanique just wants them to have a good time. It's her party. You know, of course, LTR is there and he is her conscious. So she's not going to cut up too bad while he's around. Um, hey, you guys, let's get up. Let's do some line dancing. Okay, so they get Tom. He's the line dancer coach. He's the, he's the one that's going to teach them something called the push, the push and tush. What was it called, you guys? Anyway, some old country western, you know, line dance, you know, left foot, right foot, you know, throw your hip, you know, go back like this. The men are like, okay, no, we won't be doing that one, you know, but it's fine. The girls do the little push and tush or whatever the fuck. And, uh, you know, then they decide like, you know, where is the Cupid shuffle? Where is the cha-cha slide? You know, where is the damn electric slide? That's the shit that we know how to do. So we break out in the electric slide. Oh, the men could join in on that. They know that dance, okay? Everybody does it. We ain't got no music. I said, Bravo said, fuck it. We ain't even going to pipe in some fake music and act like this is what they was dancing to. We just going to be like, one, two, three, four. Go back, back, back. Go to the sides. I was just like, I mean, we ain't even got no music, Bravo. Y'all ain't shit. <laughs> But whatever, little tiny Robert goes and gets the cake ready while they're doing that. I'm sorry, my hair is blowing everywhere because I have the air blowing. It is hot as fuck right now. It's 89 degrees and it's not even afternoon yet. So 
after little tiny robert gets the cake you know they cut the cake everybody had a good time let's talk this whole divorce thing over with paula her, our favorite mother okay paula coming near no no nonsense you know somebody said that that she reminds them of viola davis yes she does have a very calm demeanor i don't know if viola davis is the person but definitely annalise keaton i think that's what people are starting to think about <laughs> miss paula but um when Paula comes over, she's just like, so what's going on, daughter? You know, and Imani tells her how Phil told her he's not coming back. So could she pack up his shit and send it? I was like, well, damn, Phil is like that. You know, and the mama was like, okay, he's emotionally unavailable. And we're not going to sit here and try to force him to do some shit that he don't want to do. Okay. Mama is just like me. That, that's exactly how I feel about things. We're not begging. Fuck this is okay it's obvious he ain't ready to he don't want to do this no more so what you know imani feels like it's not fair because you know they have idris 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 whatever however they say his name she doesn't feel like she should be the one to tell him you know phil has been there since idris was a baby so he needs to be the one that also they need to do this together mom says well we need to do this as soon as possible facetime uh that no good nigga and and get idris there and we all talk and imani was like no i think that we all need to be together when it's done you know um paula says well the only thing she's concerned about is if you know idris finds out in another way you know it won't be good it's kind of very similar to how imani imani found out about her father cheating and um it didn't come from paula so we're trying to avoid that type of outcome so now phil is going to come home for a couple of days i'm wondering if that's going to be on the actual show i don't see him in any of the previews so i don't think that they'll show that but he's supposed to be coming home and i guess that's when they're going to do it you know she's hopeful that him and idris can maintain some sort of relationship you know she don't know so paula says okay well you told me and i appreciate that you're gonna tell your girls next and imani was like i'm not really sure you know i'm not sure if they're gonna be supportive i'm yeah, i'm really trying to tell them my business paula says just tell it just say it i mean they're gonna find out anyway you know at least the way that you say it is the way that you put it out there and just go on and let them know and let that be that you know and imani says she'll think about it so paula was like okay well you just let me know if there's anything else you need from me now we see kendra <clears throat> and hobart they are out to dinner And um, when they're about to order their food, you know, Hobart says real slick, like, I was like, Hobart, don't get fucked up in this restaurant. You know, oh, what would Kendra, I mean, what, what would Jasmine say about you, your food? Is that okay? I would have looked at him and been like, bitch, is Jasmine sitting at this motherfucking table? Do you give a fuck about what, is something going on that you need to be so worried about what the fuck Jasmine <laughs> think? <laughs> Nigga, don't be come telling me nothing about no damn Jasmine. Fuck Jasmine. I'm about to eat these lamb chops. Please don't please don't i said look at hobart girl men are men child they slick as can be so the waitress comes and um she takes the order so then while kendra has his ear remember she told us that she was gonna tell him about the interview right so she says that she went on this interview it was amazing you know everybody really liked her and long story short they're offering her a full-time position well hobart is pissed about it okay what is it that one thing that i asked you not to do is not to get into any full-time permanent position for at least six months you know the baby i think is like two or three months old so why you know we talked about this and now you're going to be going and working full time and you know you're going to be having long ass hours and you're going to be gone all day and you're not going to be producing milk and when you get home you're going to be in a bad mood you're not and i was like oh, oh. <laughs> so what you're saying hobart is women can't work and be mothers as well People do it all the time. I was like, you are fucking up right now, Hobart, you know? I mean, I kind of understood what he was trying to say. This is what this is what they agreed on, okay? But when he said there are many women out there who would love to be in your position, I was like, yeah, you, you really messing this up. You messing this up. She was just like, excuse me, what do you want me to do? He was just basically like, you gonna do what you wanna do. But you know, she was like, yeah, but I'm confused about you, you know, your support, you know, the way that you're coming at me, I'm not even hungry anymore. He was like, I'm not hungry either. Hobart was like, bitch, you're not fixing to show me up in, in front of this TV. You thought I was going to be the docile Asian man? That no. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Hobart is not feeling Miss Kendra going back to work.
Now, let's get over to Britton and Mac, you know. They haven't had a really nice date in a long time. They haven't really had any time alone since they went out of town without the kids when they went um to Cancun with Imani. So, Britton has planned out this erotic, exotic, you know, sexy night. Um, the kids are going to go spend the night over at Shanique and Little Tiny Robert's house. You know, she gonna get all dressed up and gussied up and she gonna show her man a good time. So we get the kids in the car, we take them on over to Shanique and LTR's house, you know, she tells them she's gonna fix them some dinner. So y'all go on upstairs, you know, Shanique tells them that. And then, um, you know, Britton tells them how she's got this sexy night plan, you know, erotic and all of this. And um, Max seems to be pretty excited about it. You know, men love to get some ass. That, that's just what it is, y'all. <laughs> so, and I always feel like, even though on the show they try to make it seem like them two might have, you know, some issues, I still don't think it's that serious. I think that they put in 20 on 10, but it's fine for the show. They are nice to look at. They're both good looking. They're both in good shape, you know, so fine. So, um, you know, when they leave off, leave from Shanique and, and, and little tiny Robert's house, you know, they all pumped up and I was like, girl, you better keep that same energy. Cause let me tell you, I done been in this same situation many, many times. You know, you be all pumped up and ready for the fucking, you know, all that day and you didn't pump yourself up and shit. And then as the night goes on, see, I like to have sex in the middle of the day. Look, T TMI, but I'm a middle of the day kind of girl. Cause at nighttime, a nigga is sleepy. Okay. And then if I get something to drink, you know, unless I'm really hyped up and it's like an exciting time, you know, if I get something to drink, then it's really napsy wapsy for Roxanne. Like, I'm ready to go to night night. I, you know, I could be having my whole mindset could be like, oh, it's fixing to be on and all that, you know, Mr. Be all ready and excited and shit. And then we get to the hotel and then, you know, we get to drinking and the music is soft and the lights are low and I'm getting tired. Okay, laying there, you know, kind of dozing off, trying to get it back together so I can start, you know, doing what we came here to do. So I'm just like, Britton, girl, I hope you keep that, keep the energy, girl, keep the energy. So when they get to the hotel, <laughs> did I just tell you guys about, so anyway, when they get to the hotel, <clears throat> you know, he's sitting in the chair, she, she, she going to get ready. She in there for like 30 damn minutes. I said, see, that's already, I'd have been asleep. If Mr. would have been in the bathroom, like taking a shower and shaving and trying to get you know, all this shit together so I ain't got to get hair in my mouth. And shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's TMI. But he trying to get himself together and then here, and then here I come, if he'd have came out that damn bathroom, child, I'd have been knocked out in that chair. You don't give me 30 minutes of quiet time. But she come on out. And, you know, she's in her sexy little lingeries. And, um, you know, Mac is excited. She got a little whip. And, um, fine. They're going to have a nice, sexy night. You know, she kicks the camera crew out. Okay. It's not for our eyes. But you guys can just about guess what went down. Now, lastly, you guys, Imani is at home. Britton goes over there. And, um, seems that Imani is going to invite the girls over. Actually, the girls are on their way over now because she wants to have them help her pick out her picture for her book that she wrote, the cover. Britton asked her, is she going to mention, you know, what's going on with Phil? And basically, Imani was like, I got to fill him out and see. You know, she's still not real comfortable telling her business. However, she realizes that, that you know, maybe this is something that she's going to have to eventually say at some, t some point. She just wants the girls to not be like, uh, you know, funky and talking about her and all of that. You know how it is. We just want to make sure that we're not that vulnerable. She also doesn't want to talk about it all the time. You know how sometimes when you tell your friends a problem that you're having, then every time you talk to them, they're like, so girl, how's everything going with it? And be like, no, I don't want to talk about that right now. Okay. That's how I am. So, um, I could get, I understood what she was saying, but you're on this show, the, you know, the, these are different type of girls and they not, they like faux friends, you know, created friends, manufactured friendships. So, I mean, I can see what she's saying. So the girls all get there, you know, of course, Kendra is um, planning on drinking. Um, Jasmine is watching, you know, when Imani asked her, did she want sangria or did she want something else? And she was like, yeah, give me the sangria. We know sangria is very full of sugar. And um, Jasmine comes over there and tells her that she shouldn't be drinking it. She's like, no, I'm drinking a san sangria today. I said, thank you, girl. Show, 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 show some balls, okay? But um, after all the girls get there, you know, Imani says, let's go over to the couch. You know, she could tell she's feeling kind of weird about how she's going to bring up this field thing. But first things first, let's look at this, these pictures that she took 
um, for the cover. You know, there's six poses. They're going to choose between the ones, pick the ones, you know, vote on it, yada, yada, yada. So she puts out the first three. They look exactly alike. The only difference is that she's crossing her arms. She has on light blue, you know, and she... They don't like that. They was like, where do you get that old ugly shirt on? And like, you, they look exactly the same. Like, you know, it's too clinical looking. It's all the same color. Like that doesn't show your personality. Doesn't make me want to read the book, whatever. So then she brings out the next three um, shots. You know, it's more Imani-like. You know, she has on a little, um, you know, her shirt is cropped and cut and, you know, her stomach is showing and she just looks, still looks the same if you ask me, but, um, <clears throat> it, you know, she looks a little bit more like what we're used to looking at Imani. So they say, oh, yeah, that's the one that you pick. Fine. Okay. Then Shanique says, well, did you show me your hubby? What, is, what did hubby think? <laughs> so funny when people say hubby. I don't know. Uh, when I hear that, it just sounds, okay, I won't because I know a lot of people say hubby. But anyway, what does hubby think? And she says, well, um, <clears throat> she didn't even ask hubby because... <laughs> You know, Phil is always the type to just be like, well, what do you like? Whatever you like, I like, you know. But that was a good segue. It was an opening for her to tell them um, that, uh, look, me and Phil, we are separated right now and we're going to get a divorce. And everybody was just sort of like, what? <laughs> kind of the same way that I was. I mean, I guess at the beginning of the season, I figured it was some trouble in paradise, but you know, that's how it ends. Yeah, they're getting a divorce. All right, you guys, that is that. Let me get on to The Shy, okay? I am going to be reviewing that this season um, because nothing else is on. <laughs> I need something to review. And actually, I'll be in, uh, reviewing Green Greenleaf. I think it comes on tomorrow night. So um, adding a couple of more videos to the lineup this week, you guys. Uh, but anyway, let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks, the channel Sports Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.